Well, first of all, that's a huge question, right? Um, I think medicine has, has, in many ways, medicine is changing. It was changing before the pandemic, but the pandemic accelerated many of the changes that are happening in medicine anyway. Uh, so one of the big changes that we're all experiencing is telemedicine. So much more of medicine is going to be remote. It's going to be hybrid. Uh, people are going to talk to their doctors, you know, on their phone or on their computer um, uh, at, at home. So I think it's going to be more accessible uh, and more just in time as opposed to making an appointment and going in and being seen or going to the lab. So that the way we deliver medicine uh, is changing. I think also people are going to be much more in charge of their health than they have been in the past. By that I mean I was pointing to my Apple Watch. We all have these that measure our heart rate and our steps and our, my oxygen, my sleep. Uh, I have another one that's measuring my blood sugar. I'm not diabetic. But, but just to have an understanding of how food affects my blood sugar. And so we as individuals are going to have more tools that allow us to take charge of our own health um, in, in important ways. So those are, those are two very big changes. Uh, medicine is also going to become uh, even more global than it has been. It's very clear that um, there are med medical leaders all over the world and we are learning more and more how to collaborate with one another, even within the United States, where I'm from. Um, there's much more collaboration, much more integration among uh, different groups. And so we're going to be doing much more together than we have in the past. Well, you actually reminded of two more things that I need, it reminded me of two more things that I need to add. One is the way we train doctors and prepare doctors today is already very different from what it was 30 or 40 years ago, and it's going to be even more different in the future. So they're much going to be much more technology enabled, much more data savvy, um, much more able to use and interpret these tools to improve health. Uh, the other big change um, is the other health professions are changing. And so, at least in the United States, nursing is changing. The profession is changing very rapidly, such that nurse, nurse uh, practitioners and uh, physician assistants are doing a lot of things that physicians used to do. So, the role of physicians is changing. The knowledge base that they need uh, in order to be effective and successful as physicians is changing. So, we as educators have to be sure we have that knowledge uh, incorporated in our curriculum so that they can they can be successful in the future. First of all, I'll tell you, I'm not an expert in AI, uh, but my sense, just as a physician, as a physician scientist, is um, it's gonna be a very useful tool. For any of you who've used ChatGPT, I don't know if you, if you played with it, um, th there's just an awful lot that it can do. And I think the fears that people have are mostly unfounded. It, you said it, it's a tool. It's a tool that's going to help us. So a couple of examples that I've seen just recently in medicine. Um, one is uh, uh, chat GPT's ability or AI's ability to summarize the chart. Sometimes I remember when I was at Mayo Clinic, we used to see patients who had seen many, many other doctors in different states over years um, with very complicated uh, medical problems. And they had a chart like this, a medical history like this. And it would take hours to summarize it. Chat GPT can do that in minutes, maybe seconds. And so that's extremely helpful. Um, and that's a big application that will, will make medical care easier, better. Another one that I've heard about, and these are just in the last couple of weeks, um, is the ability to just transcribe a visit. So now when you go see your doctor, you're sitting in front of your doctor and telling him or her sometimes very personal stories about your medical history, and that doctor is going like this, uh-huh, you know, typing into an electronic medical record and looking at a screen instead of looking at you. And 
that has actually damaged the doctor-patient relationship. Um, so again, what AI has promised to do, and there's work, work happening to do that, um, is to be a scribe. Not only just to transcribe the words that you say, but to be able to pull them together, to summarize them in a way that makes sense so that you can be interacting with your patient and AI can be trans uh, creating a, that story for the patient record. So, I mean, these are just two examples. There are hundreds of potential examples. There are all kinds of applications in science, in research, where AI can just accelerate the, pro the, the human process. So I, I think that some of the concerns that people have had um, are valid, but it's going to be it's going to be a very useful tool in the future. Well, um, the robotic robotics is old news, frankly. You know, the, we have been using robotics and surgery for a long time now, and uh, many surgical specialties. I mean, urology comes to mind, but many of them. That's the that's standard of practice. So, in some ways, robotics in surgery, with guided by a professional surgeon, has been demonstrated to provide better outcomes. So, robotics again, another tool, but here to stay. The reality is, the United States right now are, is suffering from a severe workforce shortage, uh, doctor shortage. We need well-trained doctors who want to be there. So I would I would welcome well-trained uh, Mexican doctors who, you know, qualify and want to be part of the United States. We were able to track people with communicable diseases, figure out who has it and who doesn't and where they're going and where they're coming, which you need to be able to do. Be the people who worked in public health are excellent. Um, but the infrastructure wasn't there. There just hasn't been enough investment in public health, uh, frankly, for it to really do its job for some, in something as, as challenging as this pandemic has been. And uh, there also hasn't been adequate uh, attention to the importance of integrating technology into public health so we can monitor uh, where people are. You know, in some places around the world, I keep pointing at these uh, these electronic devices. They use these to track people who had it and didn't have COVID to allow them into certain spaces or not allow them. And we haven't figured that out. So I think that we need to get our act together in the U.S. around public health very quickly because everybody agrees that the next pandemic is right around the corner. And as I'm reminded, this pandemic isn't even over yet. So so that's one big lesson. Uh, we need to uh, reform public health. We need to get technology uh, into it, uh, in, in integrated into it. Um, and I, I think the other thing is we, uh, we in the U.S. thought, you know, because of our, um, our resources and our wealth, frankly, we would do very well you know, in terms of taking care of our people during the pandemic, and we really didn't. We really didn't. We should have done much better. There were far too many deaths. There was far too much sickness. Um, and so we just need to take a very careful look and see what, what needs to be improved uh, in the future. If part of it is public health, part of it is better use, smarter use of technology, Part of it is these terrible shortages that started before the pandemic and are now worse. So we just need to pay very close attention to all of those things. It's very impressive. Uh, the physical spaces are impressive, first of all. Um, the people I met, there's incredible talent that I've met. And, you know, lunch with the faculty was uh, an amazing experience. You know, generally, um, if you're a leader of a university, the most important voice is the students, I'll meet some tomorrow. And right there, right after that is the faculty. And you know, well, maybe the president and the dean later on. But you know, that's the heart and soul of the university is the students and the faculty. So just having an opportunity to meet the faculty and hear their, not only hear what they were doing, but hear about their hopes and dreams for the future and their vision for the future was really very inspiring. So 
I, I, I was impressed. I, you know, I was, I was just impressed with everything I saw.